we're back and we have a very special guest today, a wonderful filmmaker, Choi Skinner. Please welcome <laughs> Choi in our midst. <laughs> So nice to have you here. Uh, it's it, we love the email that we got because uh, it was our first proper proposition. Like you know, <laughs> I have a wonderful guest for you guys, and we were like, oh, yes, <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> uh, so welcome, welcome, welcome on the show. Uh, Kate is going to do a quick introduction of the podcast, and then we can get into it. Okay. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to all the films we judged before. I'm Katie. That's Lily K. And as mentioned, our lovely guest today is Joyce Skinner. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me on the show. I'm, I'm greatly, greatly honored. I'm always honored when people have me on their shows. I appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's our honor. Come on. Uh, all right. Uh, so I think let's start with your new feature film mm. before we get into the, you know, the what you like in movies kind of <laughs> stuff, because we like that question here. <laughs> So a new life. It's gonna uh, be on, or is it? It's already on Amazon Prime. Am I correct on that? Yes, yes it's on yeah. all major streaming platforms: uh, Blue, Amazon Prime, uh, Cox, Xfinity. Yeah, it's out there now. So. <laughs> oh wow! That I I definitely like. You know, uh, we do have Prime here, but we get a delay on it. <laughs> like. <laughs> We usually don't get the stuff when everyone has those. So I'm like, come on, bring it in. I want to watch the new things. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't wait to to actually watch the film. But uh, mm. uh, what can you tell us about the whole process uh, going into this movie? Like, you know, what was uh, the idea behind it? Uh, just in general, how did you get into this uh, movie? Well, the film is over 23 years old. I, I wrote it in uh, 2000. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It's just at that time, um, working on certain types of uh, feature films was hard to get greenlit. Mm. I mean, um, it, it, you know, obviously it deals with a, a Black family. It's a mm. You mm. Know, story about um, uh, a man who's a single father and he falls in love with his daughter's teacher, but he has a hard time overcoming the past because he lost his wife when he was younger and he hasn't moved on. So um, I wanted to tell a story. Uh, I like writing movies about redemptive qualities and, and mm -hmm. people overcoming things. I think there's a lot of nihilism in films nowadays. And so we always need that, that counterbalance. And I wanted to write something that we weren't used to seeing, especially as a black man, as a single father and, mm. Uh, finding love again and I and I think we all can resonate with that and that was the main objective it was like all right I, I want to write something that's counter to what everyone else is doing you know you had the the boys in the hood you had all of the, the gangbang movies you know? <laughs> I wanted to write something that just showed love you yeah. know because I think that's what we kind of need and and being that it took 23 years to make it it's out now where we're overcoming the pandemic and everything and mm. We all need to know that we can have something new in our lives. So yeah, um, I, think I think the film was right on time. Yeah, I, I love that um, that you you made such an effort to make something that's so um, uh, heartwarming. Because I, mm. I, I definitely agree that there is a sense of like nihilism and and, and sort of um, darker tones in a lot of the media that comes out nowadays. So it's always really. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? It's it just it just feels good to know that there's somebody there are people who are like oh, I'm just going to make something really happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, listen, we we we're, we're all as as filmmakers, we're all agenda based in some capacity. Uh, yeah. Like I said, my my agenda is to make films about redemptive qualities. Um, that's just because I came from you know I'm an '80s '90s baby, so uh, everything that I saw in the films, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Was you felt good when you left the theater? It wasn't until the the early two thousands and the late two, you know, the, the <laughs> leaving theaters, and you're like, "What am I feeling right now?" What, what is that? <laughs> and it's great that it's thought provoking. You know, we all as cinephiles, we love watching films and saying, "Wow, you know, there's multi layers and multi layers and multi layers and multi layers mm -hmm. of what's going on in the film, right? From the yeah. writing to the to the art department, all the way up, but." Sometimes as, as human beings, you know, we have to remember that the legacy that's left to us is through cinema and music, the things that we inherited from our parents. Um, I grew up around the house 
listening to Motown when it was time to clean. And I think a lot of us, especially in the Europe, uh, European uh, uh, community, you guys, you, you listen to a lot of Motown, good, feel good music. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so film to me is the same. And, and it's like I've taken it upon myself to be a little bit more uh, uh, strong and wanting to push the message of, hey, let's overcome darkness let's let's have you know a good time let's feel mm. great about ourselves <laughs> it can be thought provoking but i don't want to leave the theater feeling like i want to take a shower you know <laughs> <laughs> that's a really good way of putting it yeah <laughs> yeah i feel that on so many levels sure. i uh, you know i've been watching so many things uh and at my i think my mood to watch things is getting a bit low uh compared to what it was before because a lot of times i have to realize that i i just feel depressed after watching some of the <laughs> things that yes. are coming out and i'm like i don't i I'm, i like the realistic touch on things and i you know i like when we are not afraid to i don't know kill the hero or whatever yes. but it's it's getting a bit too much yes. like <laughs> we, we need we need the feel good we need the happy things and and i i love uh the whole thing that you talked about like the redemption and and whatnot i love those movies so much <laughs> when yes, there's I mean, second chance basically if you look at something like leon right leon yeah, yeah. um the professional which to mm-hmm. me is one of my favorite films um we lose our you know <laughs> spoiler alert but we we lose our our lead character yeah. but there's that hope that goes with the Natalie Portman character. Mm-hmm. And there's that, okay, we understand the sacrifice. Yeah. We, we get it, you know? Um, we understand how people nowadays are saying they want to uh, to um, uh, subvert expectations, but it's become the forefront of what films are all about now. And it's like, okay, I, I get it that you want to subvert my expectations, mm-hmm. but I want to feel good too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think we can get so caught up in the idea of subverting expectations that we forget, like, wh- you know, what is the movie about in the first place, uh, and and like, what what is it that we want to be saying? Because if we, if all we're doing is trying to subvert an expectation, um, I, I think half the time uh, when when people try to to do that, it ends up in this place of like. Um, the narrative becomes nonsensical as opposed to something that is thematically resonant. Um, I, I, I was thinking about this a little bit the other day. I was thinking about how um, uh, theme for me always will trump narrative like logic. Uh, as long as you've got a theme and something it's, you know that you're basing your 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 story on, like your, your narrative doesn't really need to make like. You know, one to one logical sense, as long as the thematic logic is is is, is as sound as possible. Um, but I, I think you're right that they we kind of there's just such a push towards being like, well, how how different, how shocking can we be? Um, when when I think, yeah, the things that end up being more moving are the ones that um, um, you know, lean into that sort of sense of hope way more. Well, I, I, I tell you this, in, in every project that I've ever created and every film that I've done, I've, I've done well over uh, 16 different films, short films, feature films and stuff. Mm. Um, the, the, the defining factor has been, can people relate? Mm. Can mm. people to relate? And it's not even a mental thing of can they can re- relate. It's an emotional thing. Mm-hmm. You know, all great films, even when you look at something like... Um, Gone with the wind. It you know, <laughs> the acting of that time was what it was. It was very, you know, in yeah. your face, it was very, you know, somewhat hammy in a sense. Mm. But mm. when you watch it now, you still can relate with understanding that Scarlett O'Hara had all of this adversity that she had to overcome. Mm-hmm. And we can all re- I don't care where you're from, I don't care if you're from the fifth planet from Mars, <laughs> if you're human attributes in you you understand what it is to overcome adversity and yeah. so films that are classics when we say okay we say certain films the reason why they're classics is because we always um are struck with that emotional uh a, a pin there's a pin that it, 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 it's, a, it's a trigger that says this is why you like this film mm, yeah you know, so so you said theme you hit it right on the head because it's right. It, it, the story can be a story about uh, 
in another planet in another galaxy far, far away, right? At that time when Star Wars hit, it no one no one knew what that was. I mean, of course, if you read maybe the uh, comic strips and stuff like that, where George Lucas got all those ideas from, you could relate a little bit. But I think it was the family at atmosphere of of those people flying on the Millennium Falcon and and, and the, the hero's journey. And we all know what that is. We all know what that feels like. And it's the same thing like with this film. With A New Life, Ronald, I, I made sure he goes through a catharsis. I made sure he goes through, you know, the, the thing that we all go through. You know, uh, you, you're, you're in a great place, you lose, you're finding yourself, and then you're back in a great place again. Because every story ends and starts the same, right? So we, we take Leon again. In the beginning, she's by herself. In the end, she's by herself, but she's grown, right? And so you said theme, and, and I was like, wow, oh, she hit it right on the head. Because that's exactly what <laughs> She's it good is. at that. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing this a while. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's true that, true that. I love that, but like, you know, 23 years is a long time. Mm. Uh, I think the, the main question that popped into my head, like what was the biggest, biggest obstacle that you had to come through uh, making this movie? It's always finance uh, for me. Mm. Um, I, you know, um, always the money. Always the money. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, is it goes back again to agenda. If, if mm. you can make a film that people uh, who have finances are interested in seeing and, and wanting to have out in the world, it's a lot easier. Mm. Um, it's very hard now to get films about good feelings and stuff like that out there. Mm -hmm. It really is. I mean, um. And, and it's primarily because people behind the desk don't think that people want to see that. Yeah. And they don't know until it's out there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so the finances is always, a, 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 everything I've ever done has been self-financed. I mean, yeah, I may have had some crowdfunding in certain projects that I've worked on. Usually mm -hmm. it's people who are part of the project that we all come out the pocket to make it happen. Um, the reason why this film was able to happen is because I literally picked up the camera, I edited it, I shot it, I directed it, I cast it. I, you know, I did what would normally be 20 departments. I did it all on my own. Um, I had great people help, like my manager, who, you know, Ross Stevens, Artist Entertainment, and uh, specific private investors who came in with, with you know, nominal small funds. But um, the, the the finance is always the issue. Um, mm. <laughs> the funny thing is, I was talking to someone the other day and I said, you know, with every film that I've ever done, I had some form of sickness. I had um, either diverticulitis or... Um, <laughs> same. <laughs> same. <laughs> same. <laughs> well, Lily's been yeah. inflicted recently. <laughs> yep. Oh, I'm so sorry. You know, and it's always taken like a week or two weeks off of any production that I've done because, you know, I work so hard and mm -hmm. those those types of afflictions are stress based and, and you don't realize it because you're so enamored by the project and you you, you adore what you're doing. But um, usually for, for like with this film, to be specific, it was, of course, the finances, but we shot it during the pandemic. We shot it during COVID. Wow. And um, mm. it was at the early part of COVID when there was no um, no um, rules or regulations. No, nothing was around. Nobody was open. We didn't know how we were going to do it. I mean, you could sometimes barely get locations, but we did. Mm. Oh, I, I feel you on that so much. Like, uh, you know, I, I, I always tell this story because I, I think it shows uh, so well how hard the whole pandemic made things for everyone. Uh, I was cast in my first, very first speaking role after dying in everything as an extra. That's my specialty. So if you ever need someone to die in your movie, I'm here. <laughs> but uh, I was so happy. But it was an independent film. Uh, two guys were writing it, directing it, doing everything, basically like uh, you did. And uh, they were like very uh, happy that they could start on it. And, uh, you know, we were very happy to be a part of it. And then the first email came that, you know, we have to delay because of this whole thing. And, you know, hope you guys understand. And we were like, yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. It's fine. And then after like two or three months, the second email came and they were like, we have to pull out the money from this because otherwise we basically starve and we can't, we can't do that. So yeah, it was, it, I, I felt so bad for them because they wanted to do it so badly, but it never came to be, unfortunately. And, and, well, and they were never able to pick it back up and start again. That happened to a lot of projects yeah. during uh, the pandemic. Um, 
I, I was determined that that wasn't going to happen with my, mm. we shot it 16 days. I mean, minus the two weeks that Damn. I had to, but we shot it. We just, we just, I mean, there were no, no protocols at that time. There was no yeah. shot. There was no protocol. There was nothing. Mm. that existed. We didn't really know a lot about COVID, yeah. but yeah. my actors, because I would say 98% of the people in the film were actors that studied with me. I had a, a very, a successful acting studio in uh, Los Angeles mm. and my actors have always been brave. So they all stepped up and, and they just, they, they were like, look, we don't care. We're, you know, we, we wore masks when we could because Obvious, yeah. that's what was the protocol at that mm. time. But, you know, SAG didn't have protocols and there were any, um, I, I honestly, if I didn't pick up the camera, it wouldn't have gotten done. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. So I'm sorry yep. to hear that because, you know, I, yeah. I, I'm, I've heard so many productions get shut down and not even get off the ground. And, and I'm pretty sure it was probably a great, great scenario for you. And mm. then the whole thing was like, you know, just I, I loved everything about it. It was such a good idea. And since they were independent and doing it from their own pocket, basically, it just died along the way, unfortunately. And I, I felt really bad for them. I haven't heard from them in a while, but I'm hoping that they, you know, they doing what they like <laughs> that's that's yeah. my hope for them fingers crossed uh so yeah that's but the fact that you were able to do this movie uh during the pandemic uh is it's just great like you know i i always love to hear that uh, uh people were able to do especially like you know we can consider your film independent yes. then yeah yes yeah. well probably because it was independent it was easier <laughs> because yeah <laughs> yeah Anytime you're dealing with studios and, and you're dealing with people who are uh, in charge, um, mm. you know, specific things will shut down or, or get in the way of the project. Um, I make my days very effortlessly because, you know, I, I think the greatest gift for anyone that's involved in filmmaking is being on the set. That is, mm -hmm. that is the greatest gift. So I true. Mean, you get to have a camera in your face or you get to meet people who are great at what they do, the collaborative process, mm -hmm. uh, working on something that's going to affect people. I'm very big on things have to affect people and they got to be able to relate. It's not for everyone, but for those who watch it and those who experience it, they take something from it, you know? Yeah. Oh, that's so true. I love that. I, I always said that, you know, as long as I can be on a set, I don't care what I have to do. <laughs> right, right. I'm yeah. just happy. I'm like, yay, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's just great. Uh, so the question comes in mind, like, how did it end up on Amazon Prime? Did you have to do that whole campaign uh, yourself to get picked up? Well, no, um, I'm going through Buffalo 8. They're the distribution company that is handling that. Uh, they got us on all the major platforms. And, um, you know, it, it took a year for me to find a company that I was comfortable with because there's a lot of different distribution platforms out there. I, I just was drawn to Buffalo 8. Um, they handled a lot of the uh, getting it on the platforms and stuff. And so Amazon Prime, um, at one point, they used to work independently with the filmmakers. They don't do it anymore. Um, you have to go through an uh, aggregator or third party um, to make that happen. And um, I was fortunate. I was fortunate. Uh, because there is a change right now that's going on in the uh, independent world. Um, and primarily, you know why? It's because there's a lot of bad material out there. And so because people can make anything now with your iPhone, um, people are quick to pick it up. So, you know, you, you have the, the ongoing joke about Tubi, right? Tubi, because of, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of great stuff on there, but because of the stigma attached to Tubi, people joke about it and and so <laughs> things can get lost on there you have to marketing is huge now especially for independent filmmakers i mean we, we are marketing heavy on this film but it's still very competitive because you know everyone's coming out with a film every week so um yeah yeah it got a bit crowded <laughs> yeah it is it's very crowded yeah <laughs> and i mean look how many film festivals there are i mean it's, it's that's unreal. very true yeah, when I when I did my first film festival, there was two film festivals, uh, uh, two projects. I'm sorry that I worked on. Mm. The first was a web series which didn't exist. Mm. You know who had web series? I was I directed a, a, a six ep well no eight episode uh, a web series, and then my first short film, Brotherly yeah. Love, and that was in 2011. So there weren't oh, really early then. 
Yeah, yeah, right. There mm. weren't many film festivals, and let alone people who were making films. I mean, at that time, you still had to have people who knew about how to do camera work and stuff. I shot Brotherly Love on the Red One, and I shot um, uh, the film, the the the, the web series on the uh, at that time the Canon. So that was opening up. That was opening up the opportunity to 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 get um, wow. projects done with, with, with hardly any money, you know. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow! I, well, yeah. <laughs> sure. It's not it's not easy to make films. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. A lot of a lot of things to get through, uh, and and you know, as as much as we love being on the set, it's it's a very difficult job. <laughs> Yes, it's it a is. very difficult job. Um, Katie, did you have any questions? Oh, because I'm, 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 I'm all over the place <laughs> at this point. Yeah, I, I was curious because you said it took um, 23 years. How long? Um, it, so, did you was like the first draft of that film? Did you write that 23 years ago? And then, like, what did it? How did it change over the course of like? I imagine it must have gone through so many iterations over the course of that time. Yeah, it did, Katie. Um. When I first wrote it, I wrote the first draft in about two weeks to a month. The first draft. Mm. I, I knew exactly what I wanted. I think it sucked. I think it was horrible. <laughs> um, I think it was very bland and vanilla. And I just needed to get it out. Um, throughout time, I would say that period of the year, I did several other drafts because there were things that I, I would realize, especially words. You know, we as writers, sometimes how we hear is not always what we put down. Right. Um, because and you shouldn't because <laughs> it's true. You learn, yeah, you have to learn <laughs> voices. You know, I mean, I, I tend to write a lot of ensemble pieces. So uh, I, I had to learn that art. I had to learn that art of being able to speak in different voices. Um, and so that was a lot of what happened with the, the, the main drafts. Um, once I realized that, you know, I couldn't get it off the ground because at that time it would, it would have took at least 1.5, maybe two million just to make it um you know i put it aside and every now and then i read it to see like when, why did i write this <laughs> you know I, and, I know that one <laughs> yeah right you know what i mean yeah. it, it, and 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 i i orig originally i wrote it hoping that morris chestnut i could find him and mm -hmm. put him in it and um but i never bumped into him until like maybe 15 years later and at that time he had aged out the role but um when I when I pulled it back out um, in 2020, and I said, well, 2019 actually, because um, I had an actor, the lead actor Chris Rouse, I saw that he could do it, and I said, man, you know, we can make this film, and so I had to go back and, and polish it um, and make it more updated because there were things um, uh, where the, the one of the characters was at a video store. That's how old it was, <laughs> a video store. I was like, oh my god. So then I changed the video store to a kiosk. And then, you know, I added a little, you know, some some love making, some sex stuff in there for, you know, the updated audience. Um, but it, it was very bland. It was very to the point. And, you know, it had its dramatic moments. But um, I grew as a, a film director and uh, uh, as an acting coach. I understood, OK, I can stretch my actors more. So, yeah, that, that was how it, it became better, in my opinion. No, for sure. I um, I I wrote um, uh, I went to film school. Uh, my final project was um, I wrote a feature script, and uh, it's been sitting there waiting for me to do something with it. It needs like massive editing, but it it, it always um, every time I go to look at it, I think it overwhelms me too much. Um, it's been about five years since I graduated. I'm like, I don't think I'm ready to to make you into what you're, you're supposed to be yet. Yeah. <laughs> but it's but really I'll, good i read it so i can see you. those scripts will haunt you because the, the thing is is that you'll be shocked like like i said when i tell people this film is 23 years old it's my second feature that i wrote by myself mm. but i wrote another feature with another friend um and and you know he's a special effects uh, uh you know uh vfx guru i mean he's the one of the top in hollywood and we wrote this action sci-fi. We were inspired by the Matrix, and we wrote this action nice. sci-fi. And I know if I ever got the budget, it would be an amazing film. But mm. you know, when you you're looking at it, I could say, Katie, you're, you're saying to yourself, like, I'm not ready to do this yet because I want it to be right. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it, it it was. Um, I wrote it um in a quite a short period of time because uh, I, like, I had the whole thing kind of 
very vaguely in my head for a long time and it took a while to like it was finding the the bits in between that I found particularly difficult. It was like I had like moments that I I knew exactly what I wanted them to look like, but I had real trouble like stitching them together. And I'm still not sure if I think I like a lot of the way that I had to like stitch them. But um, yeah, it's just um, it came from a place that was you know quite personal. So every time I I, I it, it's one of those things where sometimes you come up with an idea, but you're it's like you haven't lived enough life in order to like make it into the thing you want it to be yet um and i think that that might be the case with it sometimes but i honestly don't know it, it just, <laughs> um well, have you had any anyone read it have you had any um i've i've lily's read it i've read, I it, read um, it uh I've, yeah it's... it was it was read by all my tutors like i got a lot of really great notes on it and everything it's just one of those things where um i'm obviously always going to be my worst <laughs> my worst <laughs> critic um and i i i, uh, I haven't i would love to find somebody um that is you know particularly um what's the word i'm looking for um has a lot of experience in like you know script editing and something like that just to give me like really specific like <laughs> points and things being like I, I need somebody to go over it with like a red pen and tell me all the things that can be cut from it basically because that's the thing i think that i get um overwhelmed thinking about it's about, it's about 120 pages it doesn't need to be that long you know um, it's really good I really enjoyed it. Like it's it it was one of those scripts where I was like, oh, I like this. I was like, oh, oh, oh. It, it makes me feel stuff. <laughs> I think that's like yeah, very but, important with every script. <laughs> both Lily and my mother cried whilst reading it. So I, I did. Yeah, always take that one as a win. Well, yeah. then we understand what it is. It's 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 because it's personal. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It's the fear of success. But you know, it's. I'll tell you this and. One of the things I always tell people as far as being a filmmaker, one of the greatest experiences I ever had was I was in the theater for um, the Will Smith film, uh, Pursuit of Happiness. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and I, I was in a, I was in a, a area where um, it was a very strong uh, social dynamic of, you know, Latin people. It, it wasn't the, the movie theater that I would normally go to in mm -hmm. my area. It was, okay, let me go here. That's where it's playing, blah, blah, blah. Right. And at the end of that film, when I got up and the lights came on, there was a, a Latino family crying on the stairs. One of the girls, they're holding her up. She's bawling um, from that last five minutes of that film. And it taught me a very valuable lesson. You know, we always talk about how film, I'm sorry, I'm getting misty eye because I'm remembering <laughs> it. Um, how film um, transcends social status. It transcends um culture mm -hmm. and um and 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 i never forgot that and and that was something that i said i want that i want that i want that effect i want to be able to make sure that i'm touching people like that mm. um, never i never forget that yeah and it was the yeah. happiness i mean i felt my feelings but then to look over to the left and to see i mean there were maybe about four of them and the three of them are holding this girl up she's falling on the stairs like like i i never saw anything like that before i mean i've yeah. been in movie theaters where you know we have our our moments right there's, mm. there's a certain moments that we all have the the, the in karate kid when mr miyagi looks at daniel san and does that head shake and those those taiko drums are going right <laughs> and or 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 um you complete me in jerry yeah. Maguire, right you complete me yeah. Right. Or even Rosebud. You're like, OK, wow, what is Rosebud? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, psycho, those yeah. moments where you're, you're, you're like. Yep. Yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. How you feel after after, you know, that moment in the shower, even even even, you know, as a kid, I remember seeing Psycho or or or, or James Cagney. And Yankee Doodle Dandy, you know, those, those moments, there, there are moments in all films. Yeah. You know, so that I think we're missing now. Yep. Yeah, I, that's uh, so true. Yeah, I talk, um, I, I think we talk a lot on, on this podcast. Um, and it's one of the things I loved studying most about a uh, film back, uh, you know, back when I was in school is the, um, and it's the thing I, I always um, say is that like film is the ultimate um, empathetic like machine. It is there to create a, a response in an audience, and it, and in that way, it becomes 
Um, I, I've said this here before that going to the cinema is very akin at this point in my life to like it's like church for me. It, it is like a religious space. Like I go there to be moved and 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 all those sorts of things. So when something and, and it's yeah to be able to create something where another person goes, oh, I felt something from that. I'm like that's that's what real magic is. Um uh in in like you know in our real world that's how, that's how you create magic and the people who can like put that sort of thing together and, and move like countless audiences who all come from different places mm. um yeah that's 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 the goal always <laughs> yeah oh every time my my greatest experience i had to uh one of them always uh, tell this story again <laughs> is a quiet place where here in hungary it's difficult to go and watch a horror movie in the cinema because people will be talking because that's how they mess their, you know, fear and whatever. And it's very annoying. I hate it. But I was like, I want to see The Quiet Place, so I will go and watch it. And it was that silent. I, that movie had such an effect on everyone that everyone was like, just that silence. Loved it. The other one was in London. Uh, and uh, we watched uh, with a full house and this was not a film festival uh, anything we watched 12 years a slave and um, at the end of the movie uh, the first thing you heard was sobs from every place and then literally everyone stood up and we we just clapped for like I don't know five minutes or so everyone like you know there were so many different people there but everyone just simultaneously decided to stand up and just and just you know clap for the empty screen at that point and it was like i think it was one of the best experiences i ever had in a movie theater to be honest i was like yeah yeah because again it's the journey that the characters take us on it goes back to what you said about theme the mm. theme it's you know the two books that i learned most about screenwriting of course the save the cat when that when that hit the market, it changed things because it, it was a very simplistic way of looking at how to write. Mm. Mm. But before that, there's a, a book by Mr. McGee called um, Mackey Mac called Story. And yes. Story talks a lot about theme. Mm. It's yep. an amazing book. And when people always ask my opinion, they say, you know, I need to learn how to write. I said, there's a lot. I said, read every book you can read. I mean, at the time when I learned screenwriting, there wasn't these programs that we mm -hmm. had. Mm -hmm. Oh, much information. We're in the data information. We're in the, the age of, of information. YouTube University, there's something you went to school. We all have different mentors and people and panels. And But at my time, it was just books you had to read. And I read the books to learn about specific things. And, you know, one of the, like I said, one of my things was I was really bad at, at the voices because I hear everyone the same in a way, but I, I kind of <clears throat> inflect people in a way based on the emotion, the emotional inflection. So um, when I read story, story helped me understand the theme. It helped me understand the story and 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 what is it that you have. So I can understand that relation with 12 Years a Slave, that all that he went through and you want him to be, just go home. You want him to go home because it was established, you know, like this man had a home. And anybody can relate with that. You're like, oh, what would it happen if I'm misplaced? So this, you know, is it the hero's journey or is it this person fish out of water? You know, fish out of water. Even a dog will nozzle water on a fish. You know, you've seen that <laughs> online where they're pushing, you know, the dog knows that the fish belongs in water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, I love this conversation. Gotta say that Thank quickly. <laughs> it's so great. Uh, so we, we we can ask our favorite questions. I think sure. uh, I I I will jump into it. But uh, what is your comfort movie? The movie that you can just pick out anytime and just watch it and feel at home or feel just you know at peace and just the world is great. Um, Lord of the Rings. Oh. I love you. <laughs> Peter Jackson. Peter Jackson, that man. I mean, he's definitely in my top five of directors of, of all time. Mm. Um, I love stories. Like I said, again, the redemptive stories. And, you mm. know, yeah. and all these characters, all of these characters that had these amazing arcs. Of course, um, Tolkien wrote it and he he wrote it from a place of love, redemption and, and, and spirit and, and friendship and so many things. So many themes that, oh, mm -hmm. you hit it, you hit it. The themes that we all relate with. Yeah. And 
to see this masterful craft of what he did to bring uh, it had what four endings the lord of the rings right <laughs> it really did <laughs> they were all good <laughs> when he tells them you bow to no one no one yep oh uh, frodo at the at the pier uh, when he looks at them and he uh, tells them i'm not going with you mm -hmm. i'm leaving and it's like I I cried so many times. <laughs> so many times. That film. Yep. Through that film. And then yep. Sam with his family. It was, you know, I can I watch it once a year, pretty much. Same. Once a year, I'll just let it play all the way through from uh yep. the Lord of the Rings all the way to Return of the King. Return of the King is my favorite out of all three of them. Um You're my new best friend. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> But anyway, that's my comfort movie. That's you know, I, I I listen to the soundtrack throughout the year. I, I watch that film in every capacity. I have no desire to watch anything new about anything that they've made that <laughs> do with the trilogy of what Peter Jackson made. So that's my comfort film. I love that. I love that so much. I love the Lord of the Rings. Oh. It's here as well. Freaking, it's it's you know. I, I always uh, say that there were two things that got me into reading, and one of them was uh, talking and watching the first Lord of the Rings movie. I was like, yep, yeah, I, I want to read that now. Of course, I was like 12 or something when, he, when the first one came out. I don't know. I was, I think I was 12 or 13. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. I'm old. <laughs> but, it, but it got me into reading. I was like, I didn't understand shit. When I first read the book, I was like, I don't know, it's great, sure. So I read it again when I was like 20 something. And I was like, yeah, this is just great. It's just beautiful. Yeah. I love that answer. Yeah. I love that. It's one of the trips that I plan on taking is to New Zealand so I can go to Hobbiton. You know, mm -hmm. I have to get there somehow. I'm See, I'm telling you, Katie, we are finding new best friends for me <laughs> every single time. Always. Every time. <laughs> they come in and then they can talk specifically to your interests, always. Just entirely my thing as well. Like, <laughs> if you ask me, like, where do you want to go? Like, New Zealand, Hobbiton, done. Yeah. That's it. That's all I want in life. I want to go there yeah. and live the best Hobbit life. I have the size. I'm, I'm a small person. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I don't have a hairy feet, but I can work no, on that. <laughs> Great. I love that answer. My my uh, comfort movie is The Shawshank Redemption. Oh, okay. All right. Well, listen, <laughs> we can hang. We can hang because you see, but then again, again, thing. Yeah. It, it's the overcoming of adversity. I think that's the strongest thing in yep. cinema that anyone can relate with. Um, because Andy has that, he has that, oh my God, what mm -hmm. he goes through. And, and if you notice all of the films that we talk about are, are films that deal with time, the time yeah. that it takes though, like you really, you know, Darabont understood how to make us feel that that time was going by. Mm. And, and, and it was so, it was so, oh, it was so painful because yeah. especially when you know the person is innocent. Mm hmm it just makes it harder. Yep. And 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 so Peter Jackson, he was able to make us feel that time mm -hmm. through the Lord of the Rings trilogy, Darabont and and Shawshank Redemption, the time, the years that went by. Yes, yeah. For Andy to have his redemption. Yep. Time that you know, or even Red, because Red comes out and yep. there's more time being wasted before they can re reignite as friends. Yeah, exactly. But it it's still like. I love the Shawshank Redemption because it, oh. it still feels me with hope. Mm. Just like how Red talks about it, it's it's there. It's there. It's never lost. And, and I think that's another very strong message of the whole movie. Amazing and I just love it. Film. You yeah. know, that, that that scene when he comes out and he's in the rain. Oh, oh my God. It's <laughs> just mm. perfect. Let's be fair. Just perfect. <laughs> Katie, I'm going to give the word to you now. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pivot us a little bit because... Um, uh, it, it, I think, it is, as has become very clear, Louise is very much a, a, a huge cinephile, but my, my area of expertise is generally more in television. Um, I, it's the thing I kind of grew up with, so I'm curious if there was, like, if there's anything that you've been watching particularly recently that you're into, or if, if, if television is even, one, like, one of your your interests, or um, if, if it's just, what, what do you like, really, in that kind of a space? I'm curious. Yeah. Oh, no, I love television. I mean, um, I think television has grown into where 
film had failed um, mm. for a while. You know, that transition of the late, uh, the early 2000s where things kind of were falling apart in the mid 2000s, um, television came in and filled a gap. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm a big Stranger for uh, Stranger Things fan right now. Understandable. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I love. I, I mean, you have um, you have uh, the um, the poster in the background of um, yeah. I I I, I, I like it to an extent. I like it to an extent. Um, yeah. because the thing is, is I love movies and TV shows where relationship is very important. Mm-hmm. Important where they where they push that understanding. Maybe that's why I hung in there with. Uh, Walking Dead as long as I could <laughs> because it was like I know that it, feeling yeah yeah, yeah. I, I mean I did hang in there man and, and it was just like you know I was one of those people to the end I was just like it could have been so much more so mm-hmm. much, um, much but Stranger Things I'm I'm in love with primarily because I'm you know like I said I'm an 80s 90 uh 80s mm-hmm. 90, and it you know the, the story of the family and, and where it's headed and what I, I'm not even so big on on the um the, the, the story as much as the relationships of, yeah. of the characters. I think that's what's important about television for me is is always the people that are in it. Um, I've gre- I've um, gone back to the X-Files. Um, I'm, I've got, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I watched it all like eight years ago and I've just decided to go back to it recently. I'm just out of, kind of a, on a whim. And I'm like, it's just like the stories that don't feature Mulder and Scully as much aren't nearly as interesting as the ones that are about their relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, it, and you know when you get the 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 bonus of them being the main forefront of the episode, and you got a really good like story, that's like mm. hooray, we did it, that kind of a thing. But like really, you can kind of get through any episode that doesn't feel like that particularly interesting story wise because your your main characters are people that you care about, and that's that's my my big draw with television is that you spend so much time learning about who these people are that they become quite close. Yeah, because see, I'm seeing that in Lioness. I've been watching uh, some of the Lioness uh, the, episodes. The spec up thing, yeah. Yeah, and um, with uh, Zo- uh, Zaldana, Zoe mm. Zaldana and Nicole Kidman. Yeah. And um, I'm seeing that that's what I'm drawn to in the show mm-hmm. because I'm like, okay, there's not a lot of action in it. And, you know, of course it's got, you know, intrigue and it's dealing with, you know, the, the, the military stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's really about what she goes through in life yeah they have this dynamic with her and her family that i'm kind of drawn to and i found myself because i wasn't sure i was like i don't know about this i mean you know um i i i, I watched from the first season of from and I again you're, you're just hitting all of the things yeah, all of the things <laughs> yeah so with from i was like okay i want to see where this heads i want to see where it goes because you know i I didn't want it to be another loss. That's what I'm concerned mm-hmm. with because I've mm-hmm. invested so much time in loss. And then at the end, eh, you know, <laughs> but um, from I'm like, okay, I I, I, I kind of was first season. Okay. Let's see what happens. Second season. Oh, they were pulling it and pulling it. And then that last episode, I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. What's going on? Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I love from so much. Yeah. I, I literally just wrote an article about why you should watch from because yeah. it's so great. And I had that feeling as well, because we talked about it with my brother, like, mm-hmm. you know, maybe it's going to be another loss situation because they get, they uh, came up with the whole thing. What if we are dead? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, hey, please don't go there. Like, you know, just um, you already had that. It's fine. Uh, yeah. But I, I I think especially with that uh, season finale, I, I, I think they were like, don't worry, guys. We got this. Get, yeah. This we got this. Realize. It's not what you thought it was. So so that <laughs> threw me for a loop. So I'm like, OK, I'm I'm still on the train. I, I had one foot off and I had my ticket mm-hmm. to, to get off and go to another train. But I'm like, OK, let's see what that is. But. Um, back to Lioness. Lioness, I think the it, it's again they're subverting expectations mm. because it's mm. like, all right, well, wait a minute. This whole episode was about her and her daughter and what's going on with her daughter, and it really had much to do about the mission. So I want to see where that's headed because it's, it's very interesting. I did a um, I did a, a binge on a uh, Twisted Metal, which I thought was really interesting. Um, okay. I didn't think I would like it at all. I'm not a big <laughs> Anthony Mackie fan. I mean, I, I I appreciate him as an actor, but um, I liked him in this. I thought Twisted Metal was good. I was like, okay. And I think it's because, again, what she had said about theme, it's about him and this girl going through this process of mm. all these episodes mm. and, and their relationship in an apocalyptic world 
and they're actually able to build love. So yeah. I mean, it's 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 a really over the top show, Twisted Metal, <laughs> um, and and I kind of I, I overlook a lot of that because I'm not, you know, I'm not big on the the, the gore and all that. I could care less about that. I mean, um, but hmm. the the storyline of him and her, and you at the end, you you really appreciate their relationship. Yeah, you really like you like. No, we want to see you guys be together. And yeah. because they go back and forth arguing throughout all the episodes. <laughs> it's funny to watch. <laughs> That's always fun to watch, let's be fair. Mm. Uh, do you have like an all-time favorite TV show then? Or Gosh, I mean, <clears throat> there are so many. Again, I mean, I was born in the, you know, 69. So I had all of the 70s and then the mm-hmm. 80s, and then the 90s. And then mm-hmm. the it, it, I mean... Of all time, and listen, as an, we didn't talk much about me as an actor, but I got to work with one of my favorite, what the son of one of my favorite actors of all time from television. I was a big Three's Company fan. I okay. love okay. the TV show Three's Company. The humor um, was smart humor, slapstick humor, physical humor, and John Ritter, what to me was one of the greatest. Mm. He was an amazing. He was. He was. It was him, or it was. Um, It was him or, um, oh, God, uh, I can't remember his name. Or Robin Williams. I'm sorry, Robin Williams. Robin Williams, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was John Ritter or Robin Williams. And mm-hmm. I got to work with Jason Ritter on a film. And wow. so that was an amazing moment because I got to tell him, man, your father taught me everything I know about comedy. <laughs> I was a big fan of that show, Reese Company. Mm. Um, current... It was, of course, Game of Thrones until the last two seasons. <laughs> um, I was huge on Game of Thrones. I was huge on that. I was huge on... Um, Not entirely surprised after your now so proclaimed love of, of, of Lord of the Rings. Like, yeah. I feel like the, the pipeline Comes is very much hand. there. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, love Game of Thrones. <laughs> I still... Well, listen, I still go online and YouTube... And I will watch old episodes and old moments of uh, yep. Game of Thrones. Yep. Um, you know, when Cersei Lannister tells him, do you love your children, Lord Stark? You know, and and, 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 and I memorize a lot of that from it. It was it was so well written. So the well acting written. was amazing. There mm. was so much about that. There's no way that ball should have been dropped. <laughs> no way. I, we could talk about that for hours. I'm not oh. going to lie. It's like... Mm, it's one it's, of those ones that... Because I... I, I I, I I had trouble getting into Game of Thrones. I watched a lot of the first season, but I think I watched, I tried to watch it at a time. I just wasn't like into it. Um, but I kind of, and, and I, I do this with a lot of shows. I kind of absorbed a lot of it via osmosis. I, I, I lo- listened to a lot of people who were talking about it. And like, it's because, especially on Twitter, because everybody was like going, you know, and every week when an episode would drop, I just read everything about it. because I found that really interesting, even if I was having trouble like watching the episodes myself. On like a on a level of you know somebody who has like studied film in the that last season <laughs> annoys me <laughs> on like just a like a fundamental level where it's just like that's just not how r- writing works. <laughs> yeah, it hurts. it hurts so bad. It hurts. It hurt. It did. It, re- it really did. It really did. Especially after like six seasons of pure fantastic uh, TV run, it's like. Mm. Still, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to say it ruined the entire thing because that would no. be a lie. No. Definitely. I think, I, like I said, I, I will go on YouTube and I'll watch specific mm-hmm. scenes. I mean, you know, <laughs> European actors in, in, in medieval projects or, or stuff like that, it, it, who they don't, no one does it better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, Charles Dance. I mean, yeah. my, oh. my God. I, I have... I have a funny story with poor Charles Dance. Oh, yes. We've got Lily's story with Charles Dance is very good. (laughs) I was working at a pub in London. And uh, there's this gentleman coming in with his friend. And I was like, he looks so familiar. I'm I'm sure I know him. And he came in once again and asked for like a coffee and uh, tomato juice, which was very weird combination but whatever and then as i uh, yeah but as i was looking at him i was like i am 100 sure i know you so it's like don't worry i'm gonna take everything to your table blah, blah, blah. i go in the back doing the coffee and i'm googling like you know 
ah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm like, okay, Charles dance. Let, let, let's try. And then just look at the picture. Look at the band <laughs> sitting outside. I was like, that's Charles dance. I'm 100% sure. <laughs> and I, you know, Alien 3, whatever you can bring up with that man. I love it. And then I went out and I was like, you know, I'm, sir, I'm, I'm so sorry, but can I ask you something? And he was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Are, are you Charles dance? And he was like, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, like just went, completely nuts on him poor man <laughs> it's like you know i love game of thrones and i have this huge tattoo on my on my tie let me show it to you and i went and pulled up my pants <laughs> and showed it to him like i have this huge game of thrones tattoo and he was like oh wow that's very impressive and he was so kind about it and after they left they were very nice said goodbye whatever and after they left i was like oh my god <laughs> such an idiot <laughs> But you know the, the the good thing about it was that he was such a warm and welcoming person because he was. You know those moments, and, and I've learned this, which is why I'm very big on moments. Mm. Those moments are very powerful because yeah, you know it can disrupt the work in a sense. You you know if the person has a bad meeting with you, now all of the work that they've done is is kind of tarnished. <laughs> you know what I mean? so um, no, he's he's phenomenal. He, he, he had he had some of the most profound mm. scene in the, in the, the, the series. Profound, yeah. yeah, profound. He's such an air gravitas. Can I ask you? Is this gravitas the same? Like what you would witness from watching in the the show, him in person sitting there. I would say yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I would say yeah. It was like you know, once I asked him the question, oh, "Are you Charles Dance?" and he smiled, I was like, "Okay, he's not gonna murder me." So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's but he's it, he's a very kind man, like so kind. Uh, honestly, he could have just said like, you know, just leave me alone. Right after I after I realized who he was, but he was just he was just the best, honestly. And uh, you know, I I always. I, I take that saying into heart to just never make your heroes, but I am so glad I, I met him and in such a random occasion because I do a lot of comic cons and whatever with my artwork. So I'm like meeting a ton of people, but yeah, just, you know, he just came into the pub where I was working. That's wow. it. Wow. That's it. It's just like, I'm yeah. getting me better. I mean, yeah. I, I got to meet Prince and that was it for me. Holy shit. <laughs> Jesus. I got to meet Prince and I, 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 I knew I was, that's it. I said, I could die today. I'm good. Oh, yep. Know? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Know so that I feeling. And, and, and Prince was amazing. So I bet, you know, it is sometimes good to meet your heroes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 hundred percent agree. Oh, oh my God. Now, if I, if I had met Bill Nye, uh, not Bill Nye, um, it, uh, uh, what's, what's Bill's last name? Oh uh, God. He's Murray. No, not Bill. I met Bill Murray. I met, he was oh. awesome. Bill yeah, Murray was awesome. Okay. He was awesome. I met Bill Matt Murray at the uh, the Jewish Democratic Party. They were it was the convention for um, they were pushing for Obama. Mm. No, no. Mm -hmm. um, what is a uh, uh, God? I can't remember his last name. It's not Bill Nye. It's Bill. Um, come on, there are so many Bill Scott. You're gonna. I'm gonna need to. <laughs> what are we? What are we? What are we? From in? Underworld. He was from Underworld. He was. That's uh, Bill Nye. Is it Bill Nye? That's yeah. Bill it is. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, that's Bill Nye. He's, he's, that's Bill Nye. He's another yeah. one. Brilliant. Brilliant. Ne uh, Bill Nye. Yeah. Nye. I don't know. Like, it's you Nye. Know. Um, Nye? It is? Yeah. Good. Because yeah. yeah. you've got Bill Nye, the science guy, and then there's Bill Nye with, yeah. <laughs> with a watch. Yeah. Thank you. That's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. That's him. Oh, I bet he's nice. Is he nice? Please tell me he's I'm nice. I'm pretty sure he's nice. I haven't yeah. met him, but I, I, I can't wait to meet him because I have a strong feeling that I will. He just looks mm -hmm. like he loves to work. I mm -hmm. love actors and I love directors and, and people like yourselves, you know, cinephiles who we love the work. We understand mm -hmm. the, the power that it contains in yeah. the world. Um, that's why I make film. I, I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of things that anyone can do to make money and to make a living. Mm -hmm to understand the responsibility, which is why she's talking about her script is it's not ready. It's not ready. It's not ready. It's not ready. One day it will be ready. It will be. It's going to be perfect before I do. <laughs> I used to, I used to judge people with perfectionists. I was like, stop that. You know, nothing's ever perfect, but it's like, that's your process. And no, you know, I, it, honestly, it is terrible though. I do need to like, if it's going to get done ever, I do need to actually work. on <laughs> 
that's the thing you have to sit down and do it sure. um all right before we let you go i mm-hmm. have one more question because sure. i stalled you on imdb obviously i was like <laughs> let's check out our guest uh you have a very interesting title in there you made the black lightning yeah. short film yeah. and you started it in and i i want to know how it all came to be because i love black lightning so i'm like please tell me <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you're already, we're nerds. You can tell we're nerds. Like we we love everything. Yeah, we're definitely much into uh the fantasy and the sci-fi, all that stuff. And um I, me personally, always knew that DC and Marvel would not hire me. Um, there's they're not gonna search me out to say, hey, we want you to play this character. And I've mm-hmm. always been big on proactivity. I've always mm-hmm. been big on creating my content mm-hmm. and not waiting. Yeah. I've been, you know, as much as I'm a director, I'm an actor as well. I don't have a problem talking about that. But um, for all the years of my work, um, I I always wanted to find a way to put my martial arts experience together with the knowledge of what I gained as a stunt person and also as a director. And so I was coming off of a film that I'm still working on, you know, Mm -hmm. time that um, I needed some money to finish the film. It, It just wasn't there. And I said, well, what can I make to, to bring some attention, to open up some doors and to, uh, at the same time, uh, fulfill my artistic expression? Mm-hmm. And um, I said, man, everybody's making these fan films. They're making all of these little short films about superheroes. Who can I do? And I and I hit up James M. Black. He's a very good friend of mine. He's a men- mentee of mine, someone who learned a lot from me and has gone on to do amazing things. And um, I said, we should, we should do a superhero film film and he said okay great what are we going to do and I went and did some research and I said oh man you know no one's touched Black Lightning no one's even mentioned him and so um I remember as a kid reading his comics and so Mm -hmm. I was like well I'm gonna we're gonna do Black Lightning and I told him and I want you to do static I want you to play static in this and he was like just blowed away and so he wrote it and then I went and co-wrote it with him and we uh got all the actors in my studio again and I said listen Mm -hmm. I'm offering you guys a part you have to handle your wardrobe. <laughs> so that saved us a lot That's of indie money. filmmaking. Yep, yep, yeah, yep. You <laughs> see? Yeah. And they all jumped in and they all got their wardrobe. We did wardrobe fittings and we did mm-hmm. rehearsals, the choreography and stuff. And we shot it. We shot the short okay. and then VFX. Mm-hmm. And that was like, oh my God. So mind you, we had went into production four years prior to the Black Lightning TV show. TV show, yeah. yeah. So two years after, <laughs> after we shot, they announced, oh, they're doing a Black Lightning TV series. And we were like, oh my God, we're still <laughs> on our VFX. We got to get this thing done. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, yeah, you know, so that we're first. We had to be first. And um, James and, and Chase, Chase Baker, um, it was only three of us working on VFX. Mm-hmm. Him, and I and, and Chase Baker, we got together and uh, we, we really pushed hard and fast and we got it done. So we we split it up to two parts and put it on YouTube. We did the festival circuit and everything. And to this day, people go, that still looks better than the television series. Ooh, that's that's quite the that's that's, that's the yeah. that's the badge yeah. of honor. That is. <laughs> it is. It is over half a million views on YouTube. It's still up there. Um, it still looks phenomenal. Um, yeah. And still a uh, very competitive, competitive compared to the show and anything else. And it, you know, the greatest compliment I got was all the different iterations of Black Lightning. Right? They said, okay, this is the video game, this is the television series, mm-hmm. comic book, and then they had my picture up there, fan film, as the Black Lightning. And I was like, I've done my part. That's so cool. That's, That's I, cool. I I've only seen the trailer so far. I'm gonna check it on YouTube later. Watch on. the short. You will yeah, but you. I was like. Oh my god, that's like very impressive already. So I'm like, I can't wait. I'm just gonna, you know, once we say goodbye, I'm just gonna turn on the TV and watch it on the big <laughs> on the big screen on my big screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it, it, we put a lot of work into it, and I um, bet. Well, because the thing is, is is when you're limited in in resources and finances. Um, I've always believed, even like with the new life, um, it 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 looks more than what it took to make, and and. I'm very big on that. I mean, um, <clears throat> I used lenses that weren't, uh, that were brand new. 
Irish mm-hmm. lenses and they came on board and, and they really showed me a lot of love recently. And I shot it on the Black Magic uh, 6K, which a lot of people were just using that camera for interviews and documentaries and stuff. And and yeah. now the Black Magic company is behind me. They're doing all these interviews and they're like, you shot a whole feature film on our camera. Mm. And and it and it looks amazing. And 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 so I would, you know, with with Black Lightning, that was important. It was like we, you know, yeah. just because we're doing it grassroots doesn't mean it had to be cheap. Mm. So yeah, thanks for yeah. asking about that one because that, that one will always be to my heart. Um, oh, I bet. Because I, you know, you mentioned that you do um, the uh, Comic Cons and stuff. And yep. I did some of the Comic Cons. And, and mm-hmm. just to see, I had um, my my uh, auntie's boyfriend, his nephew was paraplegic. Um, he's mm-hmm. in a chair. Mm-hmm. He had cerebral palsy. Mm-hmm. And I've seen this before with um, like different, like, uh, different uh, actors when they would show up at the Comic Cons and yeah. these people fly all the way from London. They flew over to see the guy that plays Green Arrow. I can't remember his name, but they mm. flew Amel, over yeah. to see him. And the person in the chair, when they see them, they start, you know, freaking out. And I happened to me when I was wearing the Black Lightning outfit, he wanted to take a picture. And and I said, man, this, this thing is so big. Mm. It's bigger than us. Mm. Yeah. You know, and 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 it's important that we receive that respect and that 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 responsibility that goes with that. You mm-hmm. finish your film. You make your. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I really do need to um, yeah. sit and and do do something with it at least. I don't. Know. You definitely do. It's a very good script. They made me cry, and you know that's very rare, and that's not a lie. <laughs> I cry on everything. <laughs> yeah. but if it's I'm very script, emotional. Yeah. In written but it's form, a good one. that's that's huge. In written yeah. Form, oh yeah. Hundred percent. Like books, it's a rarity. But when yeah. it comes to written form, like you know, you you have to be very good at it to make me cry. Uh, I will say this because I'm telling you, I don't know what's happening in this world. But like, I did a short film. My very first short film was about Loki. Wow. Yep, that was the very I short. That. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I, I need to do something because, you know, I was obviously, I always loved Loki. I thought that it was a great character. And then the Avengers came out and I was like, I love Loki. <laughs> I love Tom Middleton. <laughs> so I, 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 I need to I need to make a short film about about him. So we did that in, with uh, my acting group. We, we did it in 10 days. Uh, we shoot the whole thing and uh, it got kind of big-ish on, on YouTube, but it, it was like, you know, obviously uh it was more of like oh lucky and that's it and i'm still getting comments to this day saying like mm-hmm. yeah that's great yeah, it, it, i've seen uh fan films actually resurge and that's what i'm hoping is going to happen with black mm. light resurgence because you know a lot of people still haven't seen it so it's like when they see it i get these comments they're like this is amazing and i'm like yeah you know marketing is huge guys and and um yeah i appreciate you guys first off having me on the show because we get to talk about a new life but just um my new friends please uh just you know add me on every social media platform oh, yeah so in touch and talk about the future of what's coming up with new shows and stuff and from and mm-hmm. <laughs> yes <laughs> Yes, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put out one recommendation in case you haven't seen it because I'm still trying to get Louis to go through it. But because we're on discussion about themes, um, and I think it is one of the most incredible pieces about like that it, uh, understands its theme um, uh, intrinsically uh, is a show called Black Sails, which was about yep. it, like a prequel to um, uh, you know Treasure Island and all this stuff. It is it, it just the most phenomenal piece of writing um uh and i mean everybody in it is also incredible but like as a um as a uh yeah piece of writing it, it just understood what it was from the beginning and even though you can tell that they were like figuring out like how to make it into what they wanted it to be as they went the core of it is there from the beginning and i think it was more fascinating about it for me is that it is um the the theme of it is narrative it's a, it's a story about stories yeah. uh and it, it understands that intrinsically it's just mm-hmm. it's one of my it's like it's like a mental exercise for me sometimes I, I try to take that thing in my, in my brain and I kind of pick it apart and look at it from different directions it's like if you ever want to study how to put together something thematically I think Black Sails is a perfect example of that well I'm going to add it to the list you uh, absolutely I've heard should. many great things about it how many seasons is it four 
four, four okay. seasons. Um, right. yeah. Just, I think it's 39 episodes. Cause I think first season has a, or 38. The first season has less episodes than the rest of them, but and, and, it, and it just gets better as it goes on. So that, cause that, that first season came out like, peak um game of thrones mania so there's a lot of stuff in it that feels a bit like it's trying to be game of thrones but piratey and then you get into season two and it kind of it, it, it's like the network kind of went okay now we're gonna let you do your own thing and it, it just like blossoms into what it, mm. it it was trying to be the whole time mm. it's yeah it's a stunning stunning piece i'm getting is it to over it, or is it uh is it uh is it still uh, more episodes. Uh, no, it's it, so I think it, it went from tw- I think 2014 to like 2017 or something to mm. that effect. It's, it was around that sort of um, time period anyway. Um, and it ended so on a great note. It ended on the perfect note. It oh, ended exactly okay. when they wanted it to. They they finished it in the way that they 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 wanted it to, and it's just yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's Toby Stevens being utterly incredible. Really, for... I mean, he's always great. Let's be fair. <laughs> True. Uh, all right. Uh, so, uh, a new life from Joy Skinner. It's already available on Amazon Prime uh, mm-hmm. and all the major platforms. So please go and check it out. Uh, and you know, just tell us in the comments uh, what you thought. And we're just gonna push it towards Joy so he can read it as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Joyce, thank you so much uh, for coming on the show. And let's keep in contact because you're doing some amazing stuff and we want to hear about you more uh, in the future as well. Uh, so thank you for joining you. us today. Thank Where you. can the people find you on the internet? Yes, Absolutely. please tell us. Uh, in regards to A New Life, the film on um, Facebook and Instagram, uh, TikTok, you can find A New Life Film. So at A New Life Film pretty much all one word on those platforms. You can find me on Instagram at D-A-R-K-A-N 2000, Darkon 2000, and on Facebook, uh, Choice J Skinner. Just my middle name is in there. Uh, I'm also on Twitter as D-A-R-K-A-N-E-N-T. So um, those are the platforms you can find me on. If you're interested in any of my work, you can go to www.darkanent.com, Darkon ent.com so you can find me there all the work that i've done and i'm on youtube to darkon entertainment on youtube but so you can see black lightning and uh, brotherly love and all my old short films and uh anything else that you want to see that i'm putting up every now and then so <laughs> appreciate that Perfect. We're going to put all the links in, in the, the description. description. They will be in the uh, Yes, and please follow Choice and uh, his wonderful uh, filmmaking path because, uh, you know, we need to support independent uh, filmmakers. Yes. Now yes. more than ever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so thank you again, Choice, and uh, we are going to welcome you back hopefully soon. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank Have a you. good one. You all too. Right. Bye. Watch movies. <laughs> <laughs> very, <laughs> very important. <laughs>